All right, the Padres, they take game two of this series at Oracle against the Giants. They have outscored the Giants in these first two games 13 to nothing. So that is awesome for a couple of reasons. One, because obviously it's two Padres wins and, you know, destroying an NOS opponent, that's great. But also, at least for me, because you get to see Bob Melvin on the other side losing challenges early in the game, seeing good defensive plays made by the Padres, seeing that offense go off just hit after hit, seeing Joe Musgrove and Dylan Cease go out there and shove it down his team. Uh, it, it's awesome. So, you know, Bob, I'm sure there's some fans that are like, Ben, stop talking about Bob Melvin. Why are you so, you know, is petty the right word, I guess? I appreciate what he did for 2022, you know, for the city and all that. Like, I don't get me wrong. I don't forget that. But last year, man, that's something I'm never going to forget. You know, how, how much of a waste that year was and how disappointing it was. And I'm also never going to forget what he said in that Giants press conference about how essentially he was always looking at the, he'd come to, you know, as, as the Padres manager he would come to San Francisco and he'd imagine what it was like to be the Giants manager. He'd look over at the other side, look at the other dugout, the Giants dugout that he's in now. And, oh, one day, maybe one day I'll be the Giants manager. Like, get out of here with that. That that pissed me off. I'm always going to remember that. And maybe the Padres think about that as well. You know, that chip on their shoulder or whatever. But even if they don't, I don't care. I'm having fun watching it. And tonight... It was another team win, just like last night, where, you know, 5 nothing last night, 8 nothing tonight. Manny, Arise, Nando, man, they're hitting well right now. Manny, he continues to hit the ball up the middle in this series. He hit two balls super hard up the middle to center. Um, one went off the wall in that first inning. That made it one nothing. And then there was, I believe, one that ended up being a fly out or a line out, but th that first inning hit it over 111 miles per hour. Then Xander has a homer, only his 10th home run on the year, which I don't, I don't want to say it's surprising. It, it just got my attention when he, when I saw that, Oh man, that's only his 10th homer. But Hey, remember that start that he had coming off the IL and how great of an average he had since coming off the IL. If he can do that, there's power guys around in this lineup. And, I mean, we saw it tonight with all of the hits. 17 hits the Padres had compared to five for the Giants. You can have, I'm not saying they're going to have 17 hits in, you know, playoff games all the time. But you have guys in this order, and I, I can go through the list. Arise. Tatis can do it as well. He had three hits today. Profar can do it, as we've seen. Manny's hot. Bogarts obviously can do it. We know Jackson Merrill. He doesn't try to do too much all the time there's guys in this lineup and i know crony 0 for 5 he's he's having it tough right now and they finally moved him down below merrill and bogarts in the order um but he still is someone i'm not going to give up on i still feel like he can come up big in the postseason if even if he is struggling i mean remember grisham in 2022 where it's not like he was having this great offensive season, but then he comes up clutch for the Padres in the postseason. Something just switched there for Grish, right? And something could just switch for Crony. I mean, we saw it in 2022 as well, but he was, out, he was having a better year in 2022 than at least how he's hitting right now. Um, but he still provides value defensively for this Padres team. I mean, late in the game, he... I forget if it was a diving play. I don't think it was a diving play, but it was a hot shot. And instead of giving up on the play, he goes and gets it and throws the runner out at second base. He still provides value for this Padres team, even when he's not doing great at the plate offensively. Uh, but there's other guys around that can pick him up. When someone, it, it feels like it's not just with Crony, but when someone else is struggling, there's other guys that can pick you up. You know, Manny, when he was struggling to start the year, obviously coming off the elbow surgery, Guess who was there? Merrill was there. Uh, Crony was there. He had a good start this year. Profar was there. There are guys. David Peralta when Tatis went down, right? Like 
There are guys that have stepped up. This is a complete team, in my opinion. And when you get starting pitching performances from Joe Musgrove and Dylan Cease like this, I mean, yeah, that's what you really want to have, obviously, come postseason time. This is what these guys can do. Joe Musgrove, we know he can pitch like this. Dylan Cease, we know he can pitch like he did last night. It's just a matter of finding that consistency. Um, you know, I mean, Musgrove, to be honest, like since coming back, he has been pretty darn consistent. I know he had that really bad inning against the Giants last time out, but no walks tonight, eight punch outs, six innings pitched, just gave up three hits. If I go through his game log, I'm pretty sure I'm going to look up some pretty good outings since coming off the IL. And the pitch count is building up, obviously, so that's good. He got to, let's see, 91 pitches tonight. And to have Alec Jacob as, like, your mop-up guy, you know, when it's a blowout, that's a luxury to have in this Padres pen. Uh, but, yeah, six innings, no runs. That last outing, it was that bad inning, but he was dialed in that inning before that. Or, excuse me, the time leading up to that inning. And then against Detroit, six innings, no runs. The 28th at St. Louis was still a quality start. And remember, that was some pretty darn bad elements, bad weather to be pitching there in St. Louis. Uh, I, I mean, bad weather, meaning how freaking hot it was. And then August 18th, four and a third, one earned run. August 12th, four and a third, no earned runs. And that was when he came back. So he's been building up, you know, starting at a little over four innings. And now, I mean, he got to seven against the Mets. He's at six. He can stay around that. He's built up. Get him to 100 pitches. Maybe you can get. It seemed like to me that he was a little frustrated not being able to go out there again to try to get around 100 pitches. But it seems like that was the plan, where the Padres were at, what the score was. Let's just go to the bullpen. You're good. You gave us, you did your job. You did a really good job tonight. And let's just, let's just go to the pen. But just overall, um, very encouraged from what I've seen. I know it's a couple of games here, but there were even some fans that I saw on social media. I may have seen it in the YouTube comments about them fearing that this team is collapsing. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, let, let's put, you know, put the brakes on here. Step on the brakes there collapsing let's see where you know look at where they're at in the standings and this was before this Padres Giants series look where they're at in the standings are they still in a good spot yes did they lose three out of four yes that happens to every team in baseball okay it happens they have the talent and look what has happened again the Giants they're not the best team in baseball I understand but these last couple of games you got to admit this has been a couple of great performances from this Padres team, and we'll see if they can get the sweep tomorrow with Martin Perez as he came off of the uh, paternity list today. So congratulations to him. Uh, and just overall, putting together the rallies. We've seen this many times this season. Sure, you can have the power. You can have Xander have a homer. You can have some of the big boppers, you know, like we've seen hit homers, but Luis Arias, RBI single, top of the sixth inning. And he is well on his way to winning his third consecutive, I believe, third consecutive batting title. And he's won it, obviously, in both leagues. This would be his second in the National League, obviously winning it with the Marlins. So that will be really impressive when he does do that because he's hitting 320 right now. It's September 14th. It doesn't seem like he's slowing down anytime soon. And he has, I think, a double-digit lead in batting average over the next guy. So it feels like he's going to do it. Remember when he was hitting a little under 300 and was like, oh, whoa, Luis Arise. Well, he's, he's back up to 320. So it's impressive what he's doing. He had multiple hits today. This is, I believe, like the fifth in the last six games that he's had multiple hits. And all those other games... It was three hits that he had. Drove in a run, scored a couple today. So definitely uh, earning that leadoff spot. No one's taking that away from him. Um, so he has that RBI single, makes it 3 nothing in the six. Manny, 
his single, 5 nothing going up the middle. Fernando, 6 nothing. By the way, Fernando, great throw that he made on that single off the wall. And that prevented a run earlier in the game where it could have been a tie game in that spot. The Padres are up, I believe, one nothing, And throws it right into bogey at second base. And then there was a little bit of an issue there defensively. And runner got to third. And then Musgrove got out of it. Man, that the curveball and sweeper today for Musgrove was working. Merrill, ball on the outside part of the plate, and he takes it to the right center gap. So he continues to show that power as a 21-year-old. Just imagine what that's going to be in a few years. Remember Nando when he was a rookie? And what he, it's clear that he has, you know, grown into his body more. Manny, same, go look at Manny as a rookie with the Orioles and look at what he is now, you know? So it's only going to get better. But yeah, uh, I'm going to keep rambling unless I just stop this. So I'm going to stop it. Just a great win for the Padres. 84 and 65. They are two and a half games up on a playoff spot and the division, the Braves are helping us. Padres three and a half back in the division. And remember, they play the Dodgers for three games in that last week. So if the Padres can sweep and the Braves sweep the Dodgers, it is right there. They are right there. I'm still more, you know, focused on the wild card because that's still close, obviously. But we can keep the division in the back of our minds. It's not totally out like I thought it was, you know, a couple days ago when they were five back.